Hi, everybody, and welcome. Our Freedom of Expression recipient, Agnieszka Holland, was born in Warsaw, Poland. Her mother was Catholic and her father Jewish, but she was not brought up in any religious faith. Her father, Henrik Holland, lost his parents in a ghetto during the Holocaust. Holland's mother participated in the 1944 Warsaw Uprising as a member of the Polish resistance movement. Her mother aided several Jews during the Holocaust and received the Righteous Among Nations Medal from Yad Vashem Institute in Israel. Holland studied film directing at FAMU in Prague. Her film career began by working in Poland with Krzysztof Zanussi as assistant director and with Andrzej Wajda as her mentor. She wrote several scripts with Wajda before directing her own films, gaining notoriety with Wajda as part of the Polish New Wave. Her films were soon winning awards at major festivals such as Cannes, Berlin, and the Golden Globe Awards. She is best known in the United States for her Oscar-nominated Angry Harvest, Europa Europa, Olivia Olivier, and The Secret Garden. In 2011, she directed In Darkness, which was then nominated for an Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Around 2004, Holland turned to television and has directed episodes for The Wire, The Killing, Treme, and House of Cards. In 2020, she was elected president of the European Film Academy. JFI is proud to present this award to this distinguished, prolific, and brilliant filmmaker. And on a personal note, I feel like I've been following you around the world for these past 10 years, inviting you to receive this award. So I am honored to finally bestow this award to you. Thank you, Jay, so much. And can you can you hold it longer? Yes, of course. Yeah, I have to see it well. Thank you. I, I'm sorry I cannot touch it right now, but I'm touching the screen. And um, it is a real honor to me and pleasure. Uh, of course, I, I'm, I'm sorry that we cannot hug in this very moment, but um, it is true. We tried to find the moment, the date, the year, when I can come in person and receive it. Uh, and uh, finally, it didn't happen in the way we expected, uh, but because the world changed with the pandemic and we became connected by some kind of the virtual reality. And I have sometimes impression that I'm living inside of the Zoom. And somehow it is very appropriate. But I hope anyway that you will send it to me and I can have the item on my on my shelf. Um, I, you know, I, I, I heard a lot about the festival. I, I feel very connected to this kind of the festivals and the, to your festival as well. And the name of the award, Free Speech, is something which is probably the closest value for me. And um, from the very beginning when I was in the film school in Prague, I, I was fighting for that. Um, since I'm a teenager, and uh, now I'm not the teenager anymore, but uh, this kind of the battle, unfortunately, in, in became very relevant in our days. And um, as a um, president of European Film Academy, as a filmmaker, as a member of the uh, American film community, Polish film community, and French film community, somehow also I am I'm aware of how much we have to be awake and uh, look at the situation uh, with the very cold eye and see when something which is just uh, you know the lack of the the lack of the of the perseverance the lack of the of the uh, good 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 behavior uh, from the authorities or from the institutions uh, 
changes to something which is, which is much more dangerous with the censorship first and after the exclusion and after um, looking for the enemy, looking for the scapegoat, uh, aiming uh, the human group or uh, minority or, um, um, or some kind of the different uh, strangers as a um, cause for our problems. And in Poland, when I'm uh, where I'm from and when where is my the deepest connection um, right now, um, this scapegoat uh, became the LGBT plus community and um, is attacked by the church, by the uh, government, uh, by the um, uh, religious um, uh, right-wing institutions it, with very similar language, with very similar vocabulary and with very similar logic as um, uh, in the 30s of 20th century, the Jews have been attacked. Of course, anti-Semitism didn't stop with that. It, 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 um, it can coexist in a in, in, in very easy way uh, and it um, doesn't coexist. So. Um, um, together with um, some friends and especially um, with, um, uh, with my daughter and with um, my friend, the writer Olga Tokarczuk, who is recipient of Nobel Prize for the Literature and also Booker Prize, we created the, um, an association, the foundation um, called Equaversity. Uh, and in this very moment, because that is the most um, urgent and relevant, we are we are defending, we are collecting the fund for the defense um, of the LGBT community in, in Poland. So, uh, as I said, the, 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 the battle goes on. We are, we are not nothing, we, we cannot take anything for granted. We have to be, we have to know that somehow the Second World War, uh, the fascism, uh, it, didn't, it didn't end. It just was put to sleep somehow. And now, unfortunately, in many countries and in many places of the world is waking up. Thank you for those words. And thank you for everything you've done and are still doing. Um, we will definitely send you this award. <laughs> um, you'll have to give me your address and where you want it sent and we'll send it right off to you. And. Um, with that, I'm going to introduce Laura Thielen, who will be conducting the conversation with you. Laura Thielen spent over 30 years in the festival world, including her work as former program director of the San Francisco International Film Festival and executive and artistic director of Aspen Film. An advocate for the importance of expressive cinema in regional festivals, she currently consults for festivals in Ashland, Oregon and Boulder, Boulder, Colorado. My New York accent just slipped out there. Anyway, welcome Laura and uh, have a great conversation with Agnieszka. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. What a pleasure it is to speak with you, Agnieszka. Um, this is, um, your, your words are so eloquent and come from a deep place I know. And I just, I wanna tell you how much I learned from you, have learned from you as a filmmaker, as a storyteller. And really I'm, I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to ask you some questions ab about your career, um, but also about your philosophy um, as, a, as a filmmaker and as an activist. Um, let's start at the beginning. Um, Jay touched on, um, your sort of some formative moments in your life and who your parents were, um, your your work uh, as a student in uh, during the uh, the events of Prague Spring and the aftermath. And I was wondering if you could talk about what you consider to be um, the most significant life experiences that have really shaped you as a cinematic storyteller. It is. Hi, hi, Laura. Very nice talking to you as well. Uh, it, it is difficult to you know to 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 capture um, only one or two or three, but uh, certainly 
um, a part of my childhood, which um, shaped me psychologically and which like um, um, somehow taught me what other people are and what is my obligation or maybe my pleasure also um, to give to others. And that it was the lesson of my mother who was um, um, very eloquent in expressing that the generosity and sharing is the most important and that he expects it from me because she thinks I'm especially gifted and because I'm so gifted in her eyes, I have to share and I have to give. So uh, that it was certainly the experience which shaped me. Sometimes I think that maybe it was too much, mm -hmm. that sometimes you have to be more uh, selfish or more, um, um, more defending your, your, your own um, uh, property and your own interest. But it happened like that and it's I think very much of the things which happened later in my life it was because of this kind of the lessons or expectations uh, my father um, my father taught me the intellectual curiosity with him I discovered also the artistic world because he was a very you know refined and very hungry consumer of uh, the music of the um, film theater and um, it's how I discovered this world and the world of the books I discovered by myself. Uh, but um, I think that my vision of the world, of the politics and also of the drama or of the tragedy was shaped by my um, student experience in Prague because it was the, 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 the years of my awakening and the formation, formative years for sure. Um, um, erotically, um, as a filmmaker, and as a person who understands politics and historical meaning of the events, and as somebody who has to take the decision if I, if I will be courageous and taking the risk, or if I will rather conform uh, to the situation. And that was quite bitter experience as well, because I I understood that the people are weak, that you cannot count that the massive um, uh, collective will be heroic or will be extremely courageous. And the people, if they have the choice uh, between the vital risk or uh, risk for others, or some kind kind of the conformist uh, conformist uh, peace, they they are making finally the choice for the latest. So um, I I understood that the revolutions are never long lasting. Mm. That it's only very selected group of the people who are carrying the flame. And why those people and not the others are doing it is one of the questions which were going as a kind of the red line through several of my films. And this including one of the latest, Mr. Johns. And, and, um, and I still don't have the answer, you know, where this gene of courage or gene of justice is coming from. Uh, speaking about my mother and um, the fact that she is uh, the, she's still alive, she's 96, yeah. that she is writers and, and among, and, and among the nations, among the people. Uh, one um, of the women she helped saving um, and uh, who lives in Israel uh, just turned uh, 103 years. And, um, and, and the photos have been uh, sent to me through Facebook and by his, uh, her son. And she was um, celebrating it in very good shape, I have to tell, very beautiful. And, and, and so, and, and surrounded by, by her son and the, the grandchildren. Uh, so somehow I suddenly seen, you know, how lasting is this, uh, mm -hmm. is this um, deed of, uh, of my mama. 
courage runs in your family, it would seem. Um, I was curious if you could speak to um, your, your father was Jewish, your mother was Polish Catholic, and I'm just curious if there are other aspects in terms of your religious background. I know you didn't grow up in a faith practicing home, but I'm just curious if there are certain aspects of your religious background that have informed your artistic choices or your life choices. Um, my mother, when you tell Polish Catholic, it, 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 she will never call herself Polish Catholic because she is not a believer since uh, 13 or 12 even. Very, very early she decided that the God doesn't exist and, and, and she was never very close to Catholic Church. I think that she has very like ambiguous relation toward Catholic Church, especially Polish Catholic Church. Um, but when I was uh, 11, 12, I have some kind of the, uh, of the religious um, outburn. And um, in, secret, uh, in secret, I was, I was um, taking uh, catechism lessons and even uh, I was um, uh, Christian by water by one of my uh, schoolmates which I wasn't sure never if it's legal, if it works or not. Um, but anyway, it was a lot of, of, of complicated thing. One thing which was important, which wasn't only, you know, to, to be the part of, um, of, the, of, 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 of the community of, uh, with my school friends, but, uh, but and, and to, to, to make something by secret, which was, you know, kind of exciting and, um, uh, and special. Um, I was reading because I was a great reader since like I was six and um, I was reading the, the um, new gospels uh, several times and I became very like I think close to this philosophy of of of, of, um, um, of um, evangel and um, of Jesus uh, so even when I stopped my uh, mystical period, um, I I still think that in this in this learning is something which is very close to me. Um, I discover um, Jewish um, Jewish religion and Jewish um, uh, Jewish life quite late because it doesn't exist. My my father was a communist. All his friends mostly Jewish, but not only. They've been communists as well, since till the moment when they became disappointed with the reality of the communists and political reality of Stalinism. Uh, but the religion didn't exist. And for me to be Jew, it meant to be the heir of the great martyrhood and the tragedy. It was, it was like that that was presented by my mother and my father never, he died when I was 13. Uh, but before he never, when he was alive, he never told to me about his Jewish life. Never even mentioned the names of, um, of uh, his uh, parents. Uh, I think that the trauma of losing them because they all were, have been murdered when he was um, the soldier in Soviet Union uh, and when he came back, he didn't expect that he will find no one. Mm -hmm. Eventually, later, he found um, her sister who, who, uh, who was an, under fake um, um, identity in, in, the, in the forced labors in Germany. Uh, but a part of her sister, everybody have been dead. And I think that he never like, he never did something which today the people are doing when they went through such a trauma. It means have some psychological help and some analysis and so, and at least talking about it. He never did. So somehow he died with my, with my past as well. And yeah. I will never know the things he was the only one who can tell, tell me, including how, how was their everyday life? How, how, how was their religious life? Why he became uh, very young? He was eight when he decided that he will be revolutionary. Yeah. Uh, why it happened? It, it, 
it would be good to have those stories for sure. But um, I wanted to, one of the many distinguishing features of your films are your strong characters. And um, many of your protagonists are outsiders or people displaced who are navigating uh, a frightening new reality. Um, their journeys may be epic, but they are morally complicated. Um, they're less heroic um, and more mired in sort of their own ambivalent humanity. Um, this is certainly the case with your protagonist for The Charlatan, which the festival is presenting. And I was wondering if you could talk about what attracts you to the characters that you choose. Is it their story? It, it, I, I, I just am curious how you pick the character, the, how you pick your protagonists in your stories. I think that the story and the questions, the destiny of this character or the situation of this character is asking, uh, is important, is most important, but the, the main thing is the complexity. It means I am, I am attracted to the complexity. I believe that simpli simplicity or simplification is the lie. And of course, sometimes you have the characters who are so like pure or so like somehow defined by one biggest action in their life and that you are not going to the psychological psychological uh, the complexity and you know and and analysis it was the Garrett Jones in Mr Jones but mostly in if it's not the cause which is the main character and I did very few films of this kind, only when I felt that is very relevant. Uh, it is exactly the complexity, and especially in our times when, you know, when the polarization is so big and growing, and not only this big polarization for the, let's say, politically anti-democratic populists and the Democrats, uh, you have the polarization in every bubble, even the people who are very close to each other, they become, um, become divided by the very small differences. And the, 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 we also became, and I think that social media are playing important role here, extremely judgmental. It means everything has to be right or wrong, you know? And if you are not totally white, you are, you are, you are, you know, you have the rubbish. So, Somehow um, choosing the character like Charlatan, like Jan Mikolaszek, at least how we, how we presented him, because we don't know really what was his real character. It was not enough of the, of the, of the documents or you know, testimonies about, um, it was about his action, but not about how he was. So we constructed him somehow. And we constructed him exactly as a very ambiguous person who is fighting his demons all the time and who is doing the very good deed, but in the same time, he is capable of the, of the violence. I think personally that we are all capable of the violence. That is something which uh, in our nature, is, which has to be fought by, by, by the culture and by <coughs> some kind of the, you know, of the, of the chosen morality but we are we don't know we don't know about ourselves enough and certainly we know very few about another people so showing the complexity of the character is the in the same time for me asking the question about myself that that actually leads me into my next question for you which is that um you're a screenwriter and a director and Writers often talk about the importance of conducting one's own emotional and moral inventory to get at greater truths to share with readers and to get to tell a story honestly, to get beyond the surface reality. And I was wondering how in a collaborative process like filmmaking, have you managed to stay true to your North Star of inner truth. I'm just, um, I, I really, you, you tell these very powerful stories, which um, 
it seems to me that it, it's much more difficult to do in a film than it is to do in a, a book or even a screenplay. You know, it's it, the question is difficult for me to answer. You, you see it from the exterior, like watching my films. When I'm doing uh, my film, I'm, I'm looking for the truth, of course. I'm looking for the truth of the story, for the truth of the situation. I'm just, you know, in, in, in staging in front of the camera uh, for the truth of the cinematic language, you know, I'm choosing for the truth of, um, um, of, 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 of the acting and for the truth of, of myself telling the story and I'm telling only the stories which somehow are even if they are you know proposed to me by by the writers or screenwriters uh, I'm I'm by choosing them and I'm I'm making the act of the appropriation and I'm choosing them because they resonate very in very personal way inside of me so sometimes it's even difficult to uh, explain why this story and why not other. Of course, because I have some um, intellectual apparatus, I am I am able to to you know to to explain it a posteriori. But I'm not sure if I'm telling the entire truth in this moment or if that I'm just constructing some kind of the, you know explication. So. Uh, to be to be honest to yourself, I think it is it is quite elaborate and uh, constant process in my work and also in my life um, connected to my work, like for example our conversation, or um, or just in my activism, as you said, or in my private life and my 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 human relationship. Um, it is, I, I, I think that because my parents, when I was little, when I was probably 10, 9, 10, they divorced in pretty stormy way and, 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 and very, you know, a very painful way. And um, they've been not strong enough to carried by themselves. So I became not only the witness of that, but also some kind of the, I started to feel very early that, that they are, you know, fragile and that I have to take care of them somehow to help them. Um, it gave me some feeling of the responsibility, but it gave me also some feeling that I have to be very lucid in um, seeing what is important, what is not, what is true in people's emotions and in my own emotions. And um, so after I had another experiences which been even worse somehow or more difficult for the child uh, and it, I think it taught me a lot, but I think, you know, it is, I don't know if you come with some, with some genes which give you the enough of strength to survive it in the positive way. It means to take some, even some advantage of that because I'm using some, some kind of the emotional, emotional complexity and, you know, and the questions like that in my work. Um, Important is not to lie to yourself, not to embellish your your yourself, to see the moments when you when you are failing, to to see it, not to not to be too harsh on yourself, but to be to be honest. Is there when you you've worked, you've made so many different films about so many different subjects and you've worked in film and television, you've worked in Europe and in Hollywood. And I'm just curious if there was, if there's a character that is, that you particularly love because she or he presented you with a challenge or was a character that surprised you as you lived the life with your character from the screenplay through the editing and through you know screening it for audiences i 
I'm just wondering if there's a character or, or a particular film that just really uh, stays with you as, as a particular favorite because of what it taught you. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think that it's a journey, you know? And in this journey, those films and those characters are like the stations, which uh, uh, everyone has it importance. Of course, some stays like longer for me and to some questions and I'm coming back more often. And some I found like historically resolved in, in the history of my life. Um, I, I, I certainly, it was, it was, it was interesting to construct those ambiguous characters for sure more than to, it was more challenging to construct the positive character because it's very difficult, you know, to, to make the fully positive character interesting and real. That is a bigger challenge. It's like, you know, like, uh, but in the same time, when, when I'm looking at my, uh, at my um, historical films like um, Angry Harvest and uh, In Darkness, for example, they have the main characters, male characters, which are very complicated, being the simple people in the same time, because they are both some kind of, you know, lower class people with some, uh, you know, ambitions, expectations, some skills. Uh, but um, uh, to showing exactly this, this thin line, you know, the human being is going, the thin line between, um, between the bad and the good and how fragile is, you know, this difference, how easily is to slip on one side, especially on this bad side, um, easily. The, the tension and the, the drama of that made me, you know, made, made me to feel that I am going with them somehow. Um, and especially the character of Soha in, in darkness, uh, which is winning, you know, it means the good is winning in the big way in, inside of him, not in the world around of him, because finally he he's not rewarded for what he did. Uh, that is one of the most beautiful characters, I think, in my in my story. But in the same time, it's not it's not me, you know, completely. It's a, I'm I'm telling he's a man and he's you know the little petty thief from from Lvov, and um, and he is not an intellectual and he is you know he is uh, he can do very bad things. You know, it means he's not like my you know my my, but he's my brother somehow. To and to to do the journey with the character like that and toward the character like that is um, for for the director like me, um, not only uh, instructing but also um, also somehow you know um, enriching. Well, and, and you you resist um, his wife Wanda is so she's a seems to be an innately good person um and he's more complicated but you don't even at the end um when they come out of the sewer and he is celebrating with the cake and everything he's he, you don't idealize him at the end um you, you keep him you keep he he still has his blinders he he's he's shifted but his essence is, is in many ways the same. Um, I wanted to know, for many, a hallmark of, uh, I think of the, the finest Polish cinema is this, um, is its moral rigor and this willingness to grapple with um, complex subject matter, which we've been talking about. And you worked with, you were mentored and worked with Vida, you worked with Zanussi who also produced um, did he produce Spore or was, yes. I know it was a producer, yes. yes. Um, and then also you were a close friend of Kieslowski's and you collaborated on his um, Three Colors, the screenplays for his Three Colors tri uh, trilogy. And I was wondering how these formative relationships, these collaborations impacted your vision, um, but perhaps more importantly, I know you work with your daughter. I know you 
there's there's actors that you return to working with. Um, there's and cinematographers and composers. I'm curious how that those formative relationships that you had, how they like what you feel compelled to take forward with you to bring forward in your mentoring of younger filmmakers, or with or with with other collaborators with your team. You know, I realized quite late how important it is that I am the woman uh, and only woman very often around by, you know, by the colleagues, by, by another filmmakers. And I realized also quite late um, um, how difficult it is for the woman, even the woman with some kind of the, you know, of the energy and forward energy and fighting energy like myself. And that uh, I was bumping several times this glass ceiling and um, I was quite fortunate because the, the men you mentioned, they've been supporting me in the big way. And if uh, not of them, probably I will be unable to um, overcome the problems with the, for example, with the authorities, the communist authorities and with the censorship. And even when I became the emigre, political emigre in France in 82, it was because of Vidas and then Kieślowski's help that, you know, that Vidas in the first place, because Kieślowski, after we've been helping each other mutually, that I started, was able to start to do something in the West without connections, without, you know, knowing many languages except of Czech and Slovak and Polish um, and Russian eventually, but it wasn't very extremely helpful. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I was blessed with their friendship and I was blessed with the, their faith in myself that, that uh, I can do, I can do it, that I can, you know, I can, um, I can express myself by the cinema even if everything is against me. So, uh, so this trust and this friendship, which was very special among the uh, Polish filmmakers in, um, in the 70s and, um, and, and 80s, um, I think that it was a big chance in my life that, um, that it happened in this way. And then, of course, when I started after to leave outside of Poland and for 10 years, eight years actually, I was unable to come back. Uh, and I became much more lonely because I never met this kind of, you know, close community in, in any place again. And, and that was also quite special. You don't see it in, you know, filmmaking communities very often in, in other countries. But um, I don't know if I answered your question. Um, well, uh, could you talk a little bit maybe about what, in terms of those experience, what's important for you as you, as you mentor younger filmmakers? Um, I try, you know, what was, what was the best coming, especially from Vaida, uh, because it, then, that it was a little mentor pupil um, relationship. Uh, but in the same time, he was never like patronizing me and he never, mm, he yeah. never wanted to make me like himself. He was curious about the differences between us and he was um, actually inspired by that. And he gave me everything he had, he was able to give me in terms of his knowledge of his, you know, of his methods. And, um, and I try to be the same with the younger filmmakers. It means to, in the first place, to um, discover who they are and what is their core and what is their um, specificity and what is their kind of talent, what's, what they are, how they want to express themselves. And then to try, you know, to, to, um, to by, by some kind of the empathic, um, empathic process to, to help them to, to, to go with their way. Uh, it's why I, frankly, I don't like teaching so much, like regular teaching, because it's extremely like energy consuming. Because if, if you have, for example, I don't know, 20 students and you are doing this work with everyone, you know, you spend your entire energy uh, by like, um, trying to you know understand and to help um, 
very different, 20 very, very, very different individuals. So I, I prefer to, to, to choose who I, who I can really help in the most natural way. And is there, in terms of, because you work with your daughter um, and she was actually credited as co-direct, she's done a lot of second unit directing for some of your films, but also she co-direct, she has the co-director credit on Spore. And I just was, um, I'm being mother, I, I, as a mother, um, I enjoy my daughter and sometimes we work well together and sometimes there's challenges. And I'm just curious, um, how you identified um, like what do you what do you each bring to a project or is there something special that she's particularly good at that you um, are able to foster in her development as an artist? Yeah, we we co-directed actually more. We co-directed another movie called Janosik, and we co-directed several few TV series. Uh, but she direct she is director of herself for herself and she uh, directed several future films and wow. um, and a lot of um, TV series she really enjoys doing different genres she's much more versatile than I am we have very much uh, very much um, in common uh, but in the same time she she was a storyboard artist for quite a long time uh, because she studied in, in comic drawings and and uh, comic narration in, in Belgium. Uh, it, it was she wanted to do, she was a very skilled artist. And then she became storyboard artist, then came to Hollywood, did that, and started to be bored after a while because her imagination was much, uh, I think, more creative than the, most of the directors she was uh, working for. So in this moment, she did a small independent movie called Bark, which was quite successful and um, uh, festival successful. Um, and she decided that is what she wants to do. And her film school was me. It means she was, she was going to the to 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 my to my uh, to my shooting in, uh, from since she was you know like teenager. She was a child actually. Uh, and um, technically, she is incredibly incredibly good. I mean, she is much better than myself in terms of the you know. Uh, action scenes and um, uh, visual effects scenes uh, and all of that. Uh, but in the same time, um, she is great with the actors and with giving some kind of, visually she's stunning, but with them too, and she's very good editor also. She can edit her films and other people's films. And she edited actually several scenes of my films when I was not in the good in the good um, communication with the editor. Uh, so she knows uh, she, she's a real filmmaker. I am more a storyteller. She's a real filmmaker. And um, when we are working together, we are giving to each other, um, I think in a pretty generous way, uh, what we have the best. And we are not even giving it to each other. We are giving it to the project. So. Um, I realized, and I collaborated on similar way with not only with her, but also with my sister, who is a director, and also for for Kasia's partner for a while, and um, and with women, my experience is actually you can forget uh, forget the ego. It is not about proving that I'm right. It has to be like I want. It is to look for the best solution for the baby we are, you know, creating together. Uh, so we, of course, we sometimes we have quite stormy relationship. It's not like, but not when we are working. Actually, when we are um, working, mostly it's quite harmonic, and we really respect each other. So, um, I there are so many things I wish that I had time to speak with you about. Um, but I have one last question, which is. Um, this year, our festival has honored you with our esteemed Freedom of Expression Award. And it brings me to think about, um, you've spoken a lot about the lack of Eastern European films that address the Soviet era. And right now there's a lot of discussion in the United States about finally telling our true history to prevent harmful mythologizing and you know, the true fake news of that that's so harmful to groups of people. 
And I'm wondering in this particular moment in time, in 2021 and all the things that we're facing, are there particular stories that you hope to have a chance to make or that you would really like to see filmmakers address because you feel that they're so important to bring to consciousness to have us think about? Yes, I'm thinking that it's a lot, actually, a lot of untold stories or stories told in the very simplifying way, which uh, are relevant with uh, our choices today and our challenges today. And they have to be told somehow. And it's from Soviet area, from the history of United States, from the history of Canada, as we see now this incredible, you know, incredible discovered tragedy, which happened, what's happening very recently. It was not like ages be before you know, it, it, it happened in, 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 in 20th century, in the second part of 20th century. So, uh, and the guilds uh, and, you know, uh, the, the colonial guilds, the, the racist guilds, the, the uh, class guilds and so on in, are like accumulating now. And we see that the especially young generation is, in, in, is very eager to, 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 to finish with that. But in the same time, I see the danger to look at everything without historical perspective, without the perspective of the times when it happened and, um, and making um, everything like directly relevant. It has to do something with the simplification or polarization we've been talking before uh, about. But what I think really, I think that the world today is in such an incredibly difficult, interesting and challenging moment and dangerous moment that watching the cinema, I am especially the future cinema because the documentary is different. I have impression that the filmmakers are living in some kind of the bubble and they are not touching the reality and they are turning around um, around the problems which are, you know, important, but which are somehow a little petty, you know, a little, a little nombril, as as as, as French are telling. And it means the button belly, you know, that you are that we are looking into your button belly and you don't see the wider perspective. And um, I would like to see more fighters, you know, among the filmmakers, the, the people who are like showing that okay, you know, lying. It's not good. Not only it's not good, it's terribly dangerous. It's like poison. It can poison everything. Uh, I think there's plenty of subjects which are untouched by the, by the cinema today. And I think that is the weakness of the cinema. It's why the cinema become a little like little bourgeois kind of the, you know, entertainment. And it is good to have the entertainment, cinema as an entertainment. But uh, the greatest moment in the history of cinema was when the filmmaker took the, 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 the finger and put it under the skin. And uh, so I'm not speaking of a particular story or a particular um, event or a particular har character. Everybody can be like moved or you know inspired by something different but important it is that it that we feel that 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 the filmmaker is trying to to touch this truth which is hidden somehow you know hidden because of our because so many events are going on because you know because we are so overloaded with with the informations because we are we are tired because we are afraid because we are escaping freedom because we are, you know, the cowards, because, um, because we are lazy, because we are, you know, lazy consumers, and so on. We are, you know, we have plenty of default, especially this rich world. And, you know, I, I find it, for example, you know, I find it in, in part of the Asian cinema, Korean cinema, for example. And it's why I was so um, happy that the Parasites uh, won an Oscar even if maybe it's not a good for economy of the Oscars, but it showed that, you know, that American filmmaking community is able to recognize 
uh, what is what is really important. That's true. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you continue to stay well. We look forward to sharing the charlatan with our audience. And um, we look forward to whatever it is that you bring us. Um, we, we always look forward to your films so very, very much. So thank you for being with us. Thank you, Laura. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for this award again. And watch Charlatan. It's my last baby. And I think it's a good film. Thank you.